A few years ago, Hyundai wowed the automotive world when it unveiled the Envision 74 concept. And since then, they've essentially been edging us, going back and forth over whether they're actually going to build the damn thing or not. The last we've heard, however, seems to be leaning towards a confirmation, but at this point, it will have to be seen to be believed. But for now, let's take it back to the start, and for this three-year-old car, that start is... Uh, 1974 and the pony concept that will preview South Korea's first mass-produced car. Fascinating, I know, but more relevantly to this story, the retro styling inspiration for the Envision 74. Then add to that style a generous helping of wings, vents and retro futuristic cool and you get a car that received basically universal love. This decade on the internet. So great. I and I have a smash hit on their hands, a license to print money. Well, unfortunately, the reality is a lot more complicated than that. So today we're going to dive into why they've changed their minds more times than Kia Starmer has on whether he's going to be a transphobic tool or not. Roll the title card. My dad was a tool maker. What makes the Envision 74's almost unanimously positive reception such an incredible feat is also the fact that it's an electric vehicle, something that normally draws the ire of most car enthusiasts. But, as I'm sure you may know, it's not just any EV. It's a hydrogen electric hybrid. There's a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack driving the two rear electric motors like a regular EV but also hydrogen fuel cell stacks that both provide extra power and can be used to charge the batteries. So instead of waiting hours to charge the car, you could fill up the hydrogen tank in about five minutes. Provided you live near a hydrogen filling station, which, well, you probably don't. For context, 49 of the 50 US states have no hydrogen filling stations at all. And where they do, in the vapid eco-posturing capital of the world, California, the numbers are actually decreasing, and half of them are broken anyway, leading to a few stranded hippies. And it's not just a US problem, there are only four hydrogen filling stations in the whole of the UK. So for most prospective buyers, the hydrogen aspect would just be a gimmick. But thankfully, I and I saw that problem coming and circumvented it by making sure that no one would actually drive the car anyway. The leaked production plans stated a limited run of just one or two hundred units, with a price tag of $370,000 each. And I get the feeling that would be a hard sell, as cool as this thing undoubtedly is. While Hyundai's reputation has drastically improved over the past 15 years or so, What you think? I'm gonna let you roll in a Hyundai? still a lot of money, and anyone buying one would likely be treating it as an investment and locking away in a garage for 99% of its life, maybe occasionally bringing it out for the odd cars and triple venti upside down no fat soya caramel pumpkin macchiato did I tell you I'm vegan? Me? Anyway, now we're seeing how this great idea is starting to fall down somewhat, does the question become why were they even bothering considering building it in the first place, at least in this form? Well, there is some method to Hyundai's madness here. The intent seemed to be for it to be a loss-leading halo car. They'd lose money hand over fist on every one that they sold, but in turn it would improve the brand's desirability and show the world just what they could do. Much like the Bugatti Veyron was for the Volkswagen Group, or the Lexus LFA was to Toyota. It would also serve as the final step in the ascendancy of the Korean car market, having their very own supercar. Beyond that though, the N74 had a more specific purpose, to be a demonstrator for Hyundai's hydrogen technology, which is something they are committed to, despite the tide being well and truly against it. They're one of the few manufacturers to actually offer a hydrogen vehicle at the moment, the Nexo, which despite the recently unveiled second generation, 
was hardly a success. To put it into context, Hyundai sold about 15,000 electric Ionic 5s over the past few years here in the UK, as opposed to 9 Nexos. And I don't mean 9,000. I mean, just 9. Now, Hyundai aren't deluded, they do recognise this, saying that hydrogen vehicles have yet to significantly contribute to profits. Yeah, thanks for that one, Sherlock. And that's where I think the main deliberation on Hyundai's part lies. They've had a big thing about not producing any cars that don't produce enough profit. And, as we've just explained, the N74 would lose them about $70 million, all told. The car featured prominently in Hyundai's World Investor Day event in August of 2024. They even showed updated specs from the concept. But then, a month or so later, they almost made a complete U-turn, and we were getting dead silence until they put out the statement saying that no definitive decisions have been made regarding its cancellation. Make your mind up, Hyundai. Come on. So, internally, there has been a lot of conflict while they figure out their strategy as a brand. Now, I did reach out to a Hyundai employee for comment, but unfortunately, he couldn't get back in time as he was busy doing his maths homework. I joke, but the car had already reportedly begun testing in Hyundai's R&D center in South Korea, and was shortly about to commence testing on public roads. Surely pulling the plug at that point would be a massive waste. Oh hi there, just popping in to make a little addition here. Thanks to the sheer power of my procrastination from when I started writing this script, we do now have some more news. As we've heard, the N74 is one of the many new models Hyundai do intend to bring to market by 2030. The timeline has been widened, sure, but it sounds like good news to me. Anyway, back to my past self. If I were in charge of Hyundai, God help you all, I think I know what I'd do, however. I'd ditch the hydrogen element completely and leave the car as a regular EV, significantly reducing a lot of the complexities involved and hopefully bringing that weight down a bit. At 2,472 kilos, the Envision 74 concept is even fatter than the new BMW M5, which, as everyone knows, is the heaviest thing since plutonium. But most importantly, it would bring the cost down. The production car doesn't even necessarily need to have 700 horsepower, provided that basic styling stays intact. It would be a great shame if this thing doesn't make it to production in some form or another. Furthermore, it could potentially be a car to fill the void that's becoming this segment that it finds itself in. The Chevrolet Camaro and the Toyota Supra are both now dead, and at this point, I'm not actually convinced the Nissan Z is a real car. I mean, has anyone actually seen one? Then, on the electric vehicle side, they have a chance to steal the upcoming electric Porsche Cayman's thunder. Thank its lucky stars that the new Dodge Charger is built by the flaming dumpster fire that's Stellantis, and, once again, thank its lucky stars, that Ford royally fumbled an electric Mustang. And all that really leaves in this segment is the petrol-powered Ford Mustang, which, for this generation, seems to be leaving people a bit more cold. So, go on Hyundai, just build it. Price it so it's not out of reach, and then they could call it, I don't know, the Pony? Thank me later.